please state your name? Richard Hickok. People call me Dick. Harry Smith. And you are on death row for the murder of the Clutter family? That's correct. Did you know the Clutter family before the murder? No. Floyd Wells talked about him at the Kansas State Penitentiary. Guess it can't hurt him to tell you about him now, can it? Nope. I only knew what Dick told me. That they were wealthy, that they deserved it, that nothing could go wrong. Um, I later found out that they were actually nice people. Real nice. Nancy! Good grief, Kenyon. I hear you. You don't have to yell. Hello? Miss Katz? Yes? Yes? Thank you. Miss Katz, well, I'd love to, but hold on. Dad, Miss Katz is hoping that Jolene can come over so I can help her bake some cherry pies, but we already have the 4-H meeting today. Just skip the 4-H meeting. I'll take Kenyon myself. Thanks, Dad. You can go ahead and send Jolene over. All right, bye. Who is that? Miss Katz, Jolene is coming over to bake some pies. Oh, I wish she would have called sooner. I would have tidied up the place. Oh, don't worry about it, Mom. Jolene won't care, and I can tidy up. Okay. Well, leave you be, then. Oh, no, Mom, it's not like that. I just mean that I can do this on myself, but I'll always need you. Okay. Tony, baby, all the money, no witnesses, it's perfect. We can go straight to Mexico just like you wanted. How many yards do you think? I don't know. Better. There's him, her, girl, the kid. It's a Saturday night, I don't know, maybe they might have guests, eight, twelve, but the only thing for sure is every one of them has got to go. Seems like a lot, to be so sure about it. Ain't that what I promised you? A lot of blood on them walls. Those, those walls. Whatever. We got the supplies, rope, gloves. Ivan uh, tried to convince Dick to get black stockings to cover our faces. He went to the Catholic hospital, but he said they didn't have any. I think he got spooked by all the nuns, because they're bad luck. That's probably when I should have known that was going to go wrong. Seriously, come on man, get the bubbles out of your blood. It's foolproof, nothing can go wrong. It's so flat out here. We'll just do like we planned and then we can head to Vegas. Or Japan. Or Japan. You ever been to Japan? You'd love it, Dick. We could rent a boat in Mexico, sail across the the Pacific Ocean, end up in Japan, man, you go for it. You've already told me this. Can I repeat myself? Whatever. We must have drove about 800 miles, and I slept the whole next day. So you drove, and then... And then it... Honey, is that you? Now all I want you to do is to tell us where you keep that safe. What safe? Don't play stupid, I know you have a safe, where is it? Look, I don't have a safe! If you don't tell us where that safe is, you're gonna be a good bit sorrier. I I'm telling the truth, I don't keep my money here! Give me your wallet. <laughs> Guys, I'm telling you, I don't have a safe! Uh, yeah, I think he's telling the truth, we need to get out of here. $30? Are you kidding me? You got more than that. I bet your wife has money. No, I bet your two kids do. No, leave them out of this. They, she's sick. <laughs> Get off. So, uh, you like horses? Yeah, riding a horse is just about the best thing besides dancing in my eyes. Yeah, my mother was a champion rodeo rider. Cool. This time, they've got to go. Well, 
dick? Any qualms? Come on, man. Let, let him alive. This won't be any small rap. It'll just be 10 years. Alright, give me the knife. Give me the knife. Give it to me. No, no, please! How much money did you come away with? Less than 50 bucks. I go by Dewey. I am a former sheriff of Finley County and I used to work for the FBI. I was chosen personally by Sheriff Robertson to be the lead investor in the case. Did you know the family? Yes, yes I did. I guess that's why I was so attached to the case. I couldn't imagine how somebody could kill the family like they did. We had little evidence. We only had cut cords of phone lines and boot prints and a stolen radio. I still can't imagine how anybody could ever kill a family like that. It just, it hurts me. Would you stop reading that paper? It's not going to do you any good. Jeez, man, would you just let me concentrate? For this killer or killers? It's not right. It should be for this killer or these killers. You're an idiot. It's not like they just skimmed over it, Dick. They're gonna find us out, and I can feel it. Relax, man. It was perfect. We cleared out all the evidence. It was good. I'm surprised to hear that, all things considered. But as a whole, we hit it out of the park. We cleared out all the evidence. There's no connections. I can think of one. Lloyd, is that his name? Floyd Wells, the scum of the earth. What a lousy man. He's the piece of trash that tipped off the old KBI that it was us. We got a lot of information from Floyd Wells, an inmate at the Kansas State Penitentiary who used to share a cell with Dick Hickok. He had told Hickok about Mr. Clutter having a safe, which originally turned out to be false. Uh, he took him about 10 days reading the paper before he decided to tell a deputy about what he knew. Uh, and after that, the case took off. We were able to interview Dick's parents and Smith's sister and a couple shopkeepers and employees, some people that might know some things about the case. And what we found were a trail of hot checks that Dick had written and then it just seemed like they disappeared out of that town. We followed the trails of hot checks written in Dick's name, the idiot, uh, all the way from Florida, and then they shot back to Vegas in a stolen car. Uh, some police in Vegas, they tipped us off about the stolen car. They found it in front of a post office, and we were able to pick up the criminals from there. Now, when you received parole, it was on the condition that you never returned to Kansas. Yep, the Sunflower State. I cried my eyes out when they told me that. Feeling that way, why did you go? You must have had some good reason. I already told you it was because I went to go see my sister. She had some money she was holding for me. Oh yes. The sister you and Hickok tried to find in Fort Scott. Perry, how far is Fort Scott from Kansas? Well, how long did it take you to drive there? One hour? Two? Three. I can't remember. Of course you can't. Because you've never been there in your life. In fact, nothing you have told us is true. You've never set foot in Fort Scott. You never went to any motel. We did. No kidding. Okay. Tell me the name of the motel. 
heck ass dick. I don't remember stuff like that. I think it's time we straightened you out. Listen good, because I'm going to tell you where you really were Saturday night. Where you were and what you were doing. You were murdering the Clutter family. Never, I never. Never what? I never knew anyone even by the name of Clutter. Liar. We have a living new witness, Perry. Somebody you forgot about. Well? You got an aspirin? It took my aspirin. Feeling bad? Yeah, my legs do. We'll take this up again tomorrow. And oh, by the way, you know what tomorrow is? Nancy Culler's birthday. She would have been 17. Now listen no, here, Hickok. No. no, you listen to me. I don't know nothing. Here's what's going to happen to you, Hickok. You will be taken back to Kansas. You will be charged on four counts of first-degree murder. Count one. On about the 15th day of November, 1959, one Richard Eugene Hickok did Harry unlawfully- Harry Smith killed the clutters. It was him. I couldn't stop him. He killed all of them. There's really not more to tell. Hickok says that Smith killed them all, and then Smith says that Hickok killed the two women, but we're really still not sure. By no means was the trial easy, and both criminals definitely belong on death row for what they did. The lawyers, they tried to even prove he was insane, like someone from some asylum. I guess that can't hide the fact that he did what he did. Killed all four of them. Nothing can change this now. Is it true? I killed him. That's what I told him. To make it easier for Dick's mother. She's a sweet woman, and she doesn't deserve any of this. But you know, that wouldn't matter now. I've been waiting on death for five years, and here it is. April 14th, 1965. Do you have any last words? Any regrets? Nope. Only that no one from the Clutter family will be there. But I want to say, no hard feelings. You guys are sending me to a better place than this world will ever be. I think it's a heck of a thing to take a life in this manner. I don't believe in capital punishment, morally or legally. But, you know, maybe I had something to contribute in life. Something. You know, it would be pointless to apologize now, but, but I do. I apologize for what I did. Time to go. All right. Thanks for your time. Just like a little bit down, yeah. If then you don't really see us, you know. Thirty dollars? That's all you got? I don't believe you. I bet your I'm wife sorry. has money. I thought it fell off the table. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Camera, focus. Stupid camera. Okay, ready? I have to sneeze. <laughs> I don't mental insane asylum thing. I'm done. Dang it! <laughs> <laughs> you got an aspirin. <laughs> Good morning, Winfield High School. I'm Perry Smith. And I'm Dick Hickok. And these are your morning announcements. And now to our joke of the day. Dick, why did the clutters cross the road? I don't know why. They didn't, because they were dead. <laughs>